Okay, so in this video, we will evaluate the given definite integral with the help of a trigonometric substitution. Now, the main difference between this problem and the previous two examples is the presence of a multiple of x, a linear term in our quadratic polynomial. In the previous two examples, we had a quadratic term, a constant term, but no linear term, no multiple of x. So the question is, well, how can we eliminate this linear factor, this multiple of x? And the answer is, of course, using completion of the squares. So every time you have a definite or indefinite integral that will require a trigonometric substitution, and there is the presence of the linear term, before you can make your trigonometric substitution, you have to complete the squares. So let's do so. So let's take aside our polynomial. As we have a negative quadratic term, I will factor the negative out. And now what can we square to give us exactly 4x squared negative 12x? Well, if you square 2x, you get 4x squared. And now, half of 12 is 6, and 2 times 3 is 6, so this will be 2x minus 3. And if you square this, you'll get, let's check, 4x squared, check, minus 6x minus 6x minus 12x plus 9, but we have to end up with a positive 5 constant, so 9 plus what is 5? Of course, minus 4. And now let me redistribute the negative sign, and I will rewrite both terms in the opposite order. So the positive term is 4, right? Negative, negative 4, minus 2x minus 3 squared. So let me rewrite the integral now that we have completed the squares for the given quadratic. So the quadratic is 4 minus 2x minus 3 squared. And we take the power of the quadratic to the 3 over 2 dx. And if you look at this, you're saying, well, we have a constant term minus something squared. So think of the constant as 1. So 1 minus something squared. So think of 1 minus sine squared is co squared. So we want 2x minus 3 to be essentially sine. But this won't work, right? Because then if we replace 2x minus 3 by sine theta, we'll have 4 minus sine squared. And we need 1 minus sine squared. So to get rid of 4, there needs to be a multiple of 4 here. And what squared gives us 4? Of course, 2. And this is now our trigonometric substitution, replacing 2x minus 3 by 2 sine of theta. So let's evaluate and simplify the interior of our exponent, and then we'll find the differential dx. So, 4 minus 2x minus 3 squared is 4 minus, and if you square 2x minus 3, you get 4 sine squared. Factor the 4, you have 4 times 1 minus sine squared. And of course, 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared. This is now the interior of our denominator. Let's take the power of 3 half. So if we take the power of 3 half on this expression, well, 4 to the 3 half, square root of 4 is 2, 2 cubed is 8, so we get 8. Take the square root of cosine squared, gives you cosine cubed. 
So we have now our simplified denominator. We're missing the dx. Well, as 2x minus 3 equals 2 sine theta, both have the same differential. And so the differential of the left-hand side equals the differential of the right-hand side. Well, the differential of 2x minus 3 is simply 2dx, as the derivative of 2x minus 3 is 2, equals the differential of 2 sine theta, 2 cosine theta, d theta, as the derivative of 2 sine is 2 cosine. Well, we want to solve for dx. Now we have 2dx, so multiply across by 1 half, and this cancels the 2, and so dx is simply cos theta d theta. So now we have everything but our new bounds of integration. So we're asking, what is theta when x is 1 and 2? So let's see. If we plug in here x equals 1, we'll have 2 times 1, 2 minus 3, negative 1. And this is 2 sine theta. Multiply by 1 half, and so sine theta is negative 1 half, and this happens when the angle, of course, is negative pi over 6. And when x is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 is 1, and so we have 1 equals 2 sine of theta, divide by 2, and so 1 half equals sine of theta, which happens, of course, when theta is positive pi over 6. And now we have everything. So the integral becomes the integral not from 1 to 2, but from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6. Of, well, dx, which is cos theta d theta. over our denominator, which we already have simplified to be 8 cosine cubed of theta. Well, we can factor the 1 over 8 outside, as it is a constant multiple. And if you simplify cos over cos cubed, you have 1 over cos squared, and that is, of course, secant squared of theta. And then we're asking for a function whose derivative is secant squared. The answer is, of course, tangent. So we have 1 over 8, tangent of theta, and we must evaluate from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6. Well, we can leave the 1 over 8 outside, as it is a constant multiple. And we'll have tan of pi over 6 minus tan of negative pi over 6. But tangent is sine over cosine. So we have sine of pi over 6 over cosine of pi over 6 minus tangent at negative pi over 6, which gives us sine of negative pi over 6 over cosine of negative pi over 6. And then we can, of course, simplify. Sine of pi over 6 is 1 half. Cos of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Sine of negative pi over 6 is negative 1 half, so we have negative negative, so positive 1 half, over cos of negative pi over 6 is positive root 3 over 2. And what you should notice now is we have this term plus itself. So it's twice this term, which will cancel the 1 half. And so we're left with 1 over 8 times 1 over root of 3 over 2. But if you divide by a fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal, which gives you 1 over 8 times 2 over root of 3. And now we can do two things. We can rationalize by multiplying by root 3 over root 3, and also cancel a common factor of 2. 
which leaves us with a root 3 on the numerator over 4 times 3, which is 12, and we're done. And you can appreciate that, again, the only difference between this problem and the previous problem was, from the original integral, the presence of a linear term in the quadratic. And to fix the problem, we have to eliminate the linear term, which can be accomplished by simply completing the squares. And that's it.